Oh, here it comes. Look, look at that. Is that not delightful? Look at that beauty of a map. Game two, this is War in Islands. And this, this is how water can be fun, folks. Yeah, definitely not the OG setup that we had back in the days when the game was released for the islands setup. Back in those days, the maps were so unbalanced that it was unenjoyable. But when you have a balanced map like this, or at least mostly balanced, it definitely makes things a lot more interesting and a lot more legitimate to play on. Obviously, again, it's debated how entertaining water combat is for many, but it's definitely a nice change-up compared to what we have in most of the maps. And I think for a player like Corvinus, down one point over here, being the underdog, this is a great map to select as well. If you're looking for an upset uh -huh. map in this format, you're looking for something different than the usual tournament maps, and this is exactly it. Well, it's, it's a great map and then a great sieve because we talked about the idea of balanced maps and this one being a big improvement over previous Warring Islands. There's something that isn't balanced in this game, Lytical, and it's exactly what Corvinus is wielding. The Chinese, every single scrim I've watched, every game I've watched, even games where they've tried to throw the game, always comes out ahead for the Chinese, and it's because of their very aggressive tech up timings. So Dimu going into the French is very interesting here. Uh, the French have an interesting build. You're going to hear me say a word. You're going to think you didn't hear it because casters never say it. Galliuses. Phenomenal unit for the French. Issue here, you have to reach castle age to start building them, and they take a long time to build. That means that the Chinese can still kind of one-up you and then head into Imp. And if we get to that territory, there's a reason why Chinese Imp are on this map. It's called the Baochuan. Yeah, now you don't want to drag this game out if you are Dimu. As you said, Chinese late game is just a powerhouse. But here's the interesting part. Dimu is aging up with the School of Cavalry. And I feel like one of the cool things that you could do on this map is try to sneak a transport with one or two knights on the enemy island. Your opponent is likely going to have little to no defense on land, so with good knight micro, you could do a lot of damage to their early eco. Yeah, and it's something I'm hoping to see more of. Like, we saw a few attempts at transport plays, but, like, actually, in fairness, with great micro, these transport ships are very hard to land. But check this. We've seen this as well. In the qualifier yesterday, Kalp made a bigger investment than what Corvinus is doing. But Corvinus, instead of heading to the enemy island, he decides just to set up on the central, and this is what I'm a big fan of. A Barbican plopped here is really frustrating for the French, because long-term, it means the Chinese have carved up more of the limited wood resources. And also, French is the type of sieve that when they reach that castle age, they want to spam four docks. These Barbicans are going to block a lot of those out. Yeah, that's a great point. As you said, you have a somewhat limited supply of resources available on this map. And if you can block out a lot of resources from your opponent and just play that attrition game, that could easily give you a victory. So I have to say, I love how Corvinus is just blocking all that wood. On the other side, though, there is a dock coming up on this side of the starting island for Dimu. will be scouted immediately by Corvinus. Yeah, it, it, it's like meant to just be a little bit of fishing and then you kind of move up in the tech, right? Because like you're noticing Dumu, look what he does with these four dots. He uses them to fish, but he's also using them with the naval arrow slits. He hasn't built a single military vessel yet. So this tells us this is 100% going to be the Gallius play. It sounds meme -y, it sounds stupid. It's a unit that's had a dump taken on it so many times. But the reason why Galliuses are so formidable is they have high base damage and no clear counter. Right, So most people think demo ships, but the issue with demos is if you ever check a demo ship's bonus damage, it gets bonus damage against a broadside ship. Galleys shoot from the front, ergo, they don't get countered. Yeah, for now, Corvinus is the only one setting foot on the neutral islands here. He's got the Barbican out there. He's on the way to Castle Age in a few moments. Same thing is going to be the plan here for Dimu. He's getting a placements though, so he's playing a very defensive game so far, mining some stone as well. No knights though, no transport ships, so no early aggression shenanigans here coming from Dimu. It's too expensive, right? The reason you get School of Cavalry, by the way, is like, you know, you think if you're not going to use it, you might as well get your hands on a Chamber of Commerce instead, because you save money on having to build a marketplace, right? But the issue with Chamber of Commerce, I'm sure you've seen it in a game before. Maybe you've had one where you've accidentally done it yourself. On a map with no trade posts, you just have to keep looking over and deleting these annoying traders that are pop-blocking you and have no relevant purpose to you again. Yeah. Minor side note to take a look at here in this early game. Both players went for two scouts. Now, 
for Corvinus, uh, you can justify that, partly because, well, he also wants to scout these neutral islands. He's been playing a very expansionist game. But for Demu, you really feel like he could be a little concerned about a potential landing and some early shenanigans, and he's respecting yes. Corvinus' ability to make some cheeky plays here in Dark Age or Feudal. Now, it is true that you can make cheeky plays with that extra scouting vision you get from the Chinese scouts, but something important to remember is it is Empire Wars. So every Civ, bar the Roost, starts with two scouts. Roost, however, start with three. So it, it's a nice idea. I like you thinking that because like what, what you're actually getting to is although he did start with two scouts, what Corvinus has done well is he's used those two scouts. Meanwhile, if you look at Dumu, he should still just be sitting on his home island, right? Because he had no transport ship play. Where are we going with this? Has this got like this has just got the scout load in it, right? So wait, no, sorry, this is a galley. Wait, no, this is no, definitely that's transport. Trans ship. That's transport, KP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, look, I was like, no, there was any of this. It's really baity when it comes to an angle. So this is trying to just get some vision, right? Yeah, and he hasn't garrisoned it. So did he leave all of his scouts at home once he saw the Barbican? I yeah, think it seems so. like it. Seems like both of the huh. scouts are just chilling back at home. By the way, I don't know what it is. I feel like this. I feel like there's a Chinese fanboy who made the Warren Islands. Uh, what it is, because every time I see Chinese, they always get more resource bank than the other Sith. Like something to keep in mind is like, yes, Corvinus has already secured the mid-map wood lines, which is going to be important deep into the game. Even earlier than that, though, if you look at Dumu's wood and then you look at Corvinus's, I think it's fair to say that his wood lines are a bit chunkier, right? Whereas Dumu's kind of semi-spawned in, and the other load got flooded and cut off by the water. Yeah. Important thing to notice is that both players have their wood kind of at the edge of their island. So if this yes. game goes very long, playing with Denial with combat ships is a realistic option for both. But what's more interesting is that the two neutral islands have a very different amount of wood available on them. One of them is essentially barren, the other one is full. That's by design. Oh you God. see, one of them is the gold island, quote-unquote, the other one is the wood island. And for yes. now, it's Corvinus that has both of those secured, but the stronger the reinforcements are in the wood island with the Barbican. But look what he's doing. Is, Cor is Corvinus going to try this? Because he needs more villagers here if he's going to go for what I think he is here. He's saving up for Imperial Age. So, like, this is my worry. This Dumu is going to do this build, and it's already dead. And, yep, this is problematic. So both of the islands are going to be secure. That also leads into sacred sites, right? That's going to be a Great Wall Gatehouse. You've got Galliuses. I said nothing has a clear counter to Galliuses. There's one thing, and it's emplacements, because they get the bonus damage against you. And, you know, it's kind of rough to think. Had Dumu maybe built an early night, maybe he could have done something about this. But the fact that he's been Castle Age for a while now and only has two Galliuses out shows you just how hard it is to boom these up. They take 50 seconds to produce. Let me put that in perspective for you. When Corvinus reaches Imperial Age, he will build Bauchuans quicker. Yeah, these Galliuses just take way too much time here for Dimu. Can he snipe them? He's got to be beaten he's... to Imperial. Oh, he's sniping the oh. Bills, though. Ooh, oh, 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 okay. Whoa. Yes. Okay, Benny boy, that's what I came to see. That is beautiful. Just in range there. Crafty bugger. I wasn't sure he's going to be able to see. I don't know if that's fishing boat vision giving him just enough there. And Corvinus, I don't think he can build that further back. This is why I wanted him to bring more villages originally. And I believe that's exactly what we're getting. But this is delaying his tech timing, which means that Dumu is scaling more. Now, if he's able to push forward from here and start taking out docks, the Bauchuans might not be able to come online. And Dumu, now with a keep drop. Okay. This is what I wanted to see. Benny boy... He's delivering us a game. Yeah, that is just unreal moves out there. Stopping the Imperial Age, now pulling the Vils, and you see he's exploiting the weakness that Corvinus only has a handful of Vils here. He's going to get rid of the transport ship now, realizes he can't torch down the tower, so he's going to try to rush this castle up. Should be able to get rid of the tower, though, with the Galliasses. This was so greedy and almost just unnecessary from Corvinus. It's almost like Dimu let him have so much of the map that he became gluttonous and complacent. And now he's being punished, right? Because the reality is Corvinus could have dropped this on the Barbican Island, and it would have still been a great timing for him. Instead, he has to cancel it and now go for the spirit way? I, I think this is a loss for him. That static point defense is a huge deal against Galliuses. Dimu now being presented a window that usually never exists in this matchup. Yeah, that's just a huge loss for Corvinus. Not only did he lose the land market, he cancelled it, he got a full refund, but the delay was just massive. And you see, this is exactly what Demu needed. 
he's still far away from Imperial Age, so buying the time, even just delaying those galley or those Baoshuans by a minute or so is immensely valuable for Demu. Having said that, mm -hmm. the Baoshuan are on the way, <laughs> and you see you have six of them queued up. These Galliuses might not live long. Well, they're going to get enough time for Dimu to make his own tech up. Because one thing to keep in mind is Corvin is all of his docks building these, bar maybe one or two max, are on the backside of his base. And as we know, Baochuans do not move fast, okay? They're big sluggers, but they move like slugs as well. So it's going to offer up an opportunity. In fact, if he's quick to move and snipe this out, I think it's going to be a little bit too slow to take out that dock. But with this many Galliuses, he will outnumber the first Baochuan. Yeah, for Corvinus, he needs to be smart about this. He needs to buy some time. He is just trying to fall back into the range of the Barbican. It's not like the Barbican Jesus, is doing much so over tanky. here. But that's that so Baoshuan right? gets picked off rather easily here. A nice pickup for yep. Dimu. And now, now he's now getting ready to go Imperial himself. Can we check Dimu, by the way? Because I think he might have got the, the, the hulls. I think he's got extra health on these Galluses because it, it just felt ludicrous just how much more health they had in that exchange fire. Yes, there's a lot more of them, but I think the issue here is, yeah, there we go. So he has got the extra health, and if you check those Baochuans, Corvinus hasn't gone for it yet. He was a greedy boy, right? He was delayed so long with his tech up that he just spent all of his gold on Baochuans. He left nothing to get the upgrades. I think it has kicked in now, but I don't think it was there in the last one. Now he's going for the level two. This is an edge he potentially has, because remember, Dumu, he hasn't reached Imp yet. Yeah, he's on the way with the Red Palace, and he has built that on his starting island at the southern corner. He decided not to build that on a neutral island. It's going to be a nice defense for his initial island to work with. Now he's going to take down the Barbican here. But Corvinus now has eight Baoshuan to work with, and he's yet to show them to Dimu. Yes, and Dimu is going to need quite a while. Those Karaks do take a long time to build. Baoshuans actually come out quicker. And actually, Baoshuans versus Karaks, that's a, that's a fight you do not win against the Baoshuans. They're actually favored there. So... We'll see if he actually wants to switch into them or if he just wants to mass more Galliuses. We'd actually love to see Dumu consider just going in for some sort of small group of Cav and flanking here because I don't think you win this off of raw military might back and forth. You win this off of good eco assaults that the French can do. I think we've got a unique... Is that the unique tech coming in for the French? The uh... last one I don't see often. Yeah, well, these are all water upgrades, so generally speaking, yeah, you don't see many guns. of them in normal competitive games. No, 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 no. That, that's the that's a French unique one. I'm pretty sure yep. of that. Um, which, like, an extra 15% range, Galliuses and Carracks, that's going to allow you to maybe counter out against these Chinese. It's interesting because we were talking about the English for their range, but that should end up being about the same game, if not more. Wow, so like, what is it? Carracks are, if I remember correctly, Carracks are eight tile range, I want to say. I'm wrong about that. I'm pretty sure it's nine, actually. But like, with 15% on top of that, uh, considering I think the game does round up in that circumstance. Yeah, so the nine tile range. So that's actually going to bump him up to 10 tile range. The Bauchuans, they will be able to attack you with the, uh, the Nest of Bees, right? Because they have more range. But the broadside guns are actually now going to be outgunned and outranged by Dumu. Wait, am I wrong? Was it range? Or... I'm wrong, aren't I? That was damage. Ignore me. I'm having a day. <laughs> uh, looking at the Navy over here, just looking at the sheer military population, Corvinus has the edge, though, and he's actually creeping up with some demo ships over here. Now, this is not something that Dimu has seen yet, and this could come as a nasty surprise. Those Galliuses are just so damn slow, KP. With a good wrap yeah. at the demos, Corvinus might have a window to sink the entire fleet of demo in a blink of an eye. You know what it is? My brain was like, long guns makes them sound like they shoot longer. Oh. Dumu has to gap close. He has the damage advantage. And these guys just also benefit from that. Check that damage right there. I don't know what you had inside that transport, though, but 16 units going down. There is the push with the demo, KP. I, I mean, it's not going to insta-kill the Galluses. He needs to actually find the character for it to be a worthwhile exchange. Dumu's getting on Dumu. Clean up a decent amount of the fleet. And now, with no front side to protect him, well, Dimu is in a bit of a bind here. He doesn't have static point defenses. He doesn't have the ability to shoot Arbalus out. And folks, we've just seen Baoshuans at their best. They seem non unstoppable. It's not just the Baoshuans, KP. It's really the demos. The fact that Dimu got pushed back over here and the patience that Corvinus had to pile up the demos 
and show them when he had like 16 of them ready to go. Sunk most yeah. of the fleet here from Demu. And now rebuilding this is next to impossible for Demu. He's losing the docks, he's losing ground. He is outnumbered in population two to one. Yeah, like this is, I mean, this is the way it's meant to play out. I was actually getting really hyped because I thought Demu had an interesting answer. The long guns, I, I went down the wrong slide, right? It's like long, more range. But even the more damage, like you're building Galliuses and you're building Carracks, right? These are still slow moving units. So if you don't have range, you can't even engage. And yeah, that demo play, it was good. It was you know, not even necessarily needed. I think if he'd just been scaling even more Bao Chuans, he still wins this fight. It's just how dominant the Chinese are. I mean, I can't remember the bans. Dumu must not have had Chinese though, because every, every player I've talked to about this mode so far and every game I've seen, there is no disagreement that Chinese are number one on Warring Islands. Oh yeah, 16 Baoshuan now for Corvinus. And, you know, those Baoshuans are very big. Their hitboxes are big, their models are big. So you can actually sneak a couple of demos in between them, and it's very difficult for your opponent to see. Yeah, I mean, it's like, there's not many things that are going to benefit from that bigger hitbox, right? And like, here's the annoying part, right? Dumu, let's say he's like, okay, he's got all these big ships, I'm going to build demos. That doesn't work either, because the range at which the SMB start engaging, and the ability to kind of broadside fire, the only way you'd ever kill with demo ships against this type of mass is if you came from multiple angles. And that's just not doable from this position for, for Dumu. His villages are now being massacred. This is... It's pretty much GG. I mean, the Great Wall Gatehouse is even being added in here, back where it was originally attempted. As Corvidus is now going to take control of both central islands. Yeah, nice micro from Demo over here, evading most of those demos. Red Palace is here to help, but as you said, Great Wall Gatehouse is out there. And more importantly, Demo has lost most of the gold miners. He's down to 70 villagers. Those Baoshuan can actually range the gold mine that Demo has. And now it's just desperation for Demo. His population is increasing compared to where it was a moment ago, but his yeah, position is still... PTCs. Yeah. Look I, at that I gold mean, mine, KP. Just 58 eight. villager kills by Corvinus in this game so far. He, he can't access gold at all. Like, if, you can't, if you're playing French, you can't access gold. I don't care what build you're doing, you're not French, right? And, like, the only reason he's not dead is this red pass is the one thing that Corvinus can't deal with. But if Corvinus decides to drop a siege workshop, build a transport ship, and wheel over two bombards... <laughs> We're pretty much GG. Well, actually, it'll have to be Trebs, right, due to the range of the Red Palace, but the point remains the same. There's, there's no easy answer back in. I really still would like to see Dumu just try and counter raid, because even if he cleans this fleet up once, Corvinus has a, a cleaner ability to rebuild the fleet than Dumu does. Yeah, the Dumu needs that gold mine, though. That gold mine currently being shut down by Corvinus. Dumu has to fight for it, otherwise, he's got no shot in this game. Do or die, and it's looking like Dumu needs to get some demos in that name. Going to be chased away here. Able to keep the distance and good micro here with the back line to ensure he kills them off. But the problem is like this stalemate in this position is still blocking you from accessing one of your fat golds, right? So you are on the timer. Certainly. Corvinus has both of the neutral islands right now, and he's leveraging that. He's just taking away all those resources from there. Dumu needs to find a fight here, a good fight that is. Now Corvinus has landed on his islands with villagers as well. You feel like the end is near here for Demu. Oh, yeah. And I believe, what is he building up behind? He's going to get the rack. So we're going to get house guard raids. This is the point where Demu can't do anything. Like, look at his food income. All of his food is going into the production of additional characters. He can't afford anything diverted to push out knights. You know, give it about 30 seconds, and his eco number, which has started to grow again, is going to be shriveling up below 50 in about two minutes' time. Yeah, he's up to 12 Carex. He's pushing back Corvinus for the time being, but Corvinus has a new wave of demos coming in. We've said this a couple of times, KP, but it really feels like a now or never for Demu. He needs to clear this up ASAP. The, the problem is, like, there's no there's no clean way out. I feel for Demu right now. I feel for anyone who has to deal with the Chinese like this. It's like, you, you know what you need to do. You know you need to move out, but it feels so difficult to do so. Like, Demu, sure, right now he does have the, the heavy ship lead, but he's invested a lot of his economy in this. Corvinus is a little bit awkward on gold, but that's going to be fixed quickly. And now, with the character numbers being depleted as they are, the movement comes in from the demos, and he'll get in deep enough to clean good old Benny Boy up. I, I think this is the point where you can't rebuild. GG gets called. 
Paul Minutes answers back and shows you exactly why Chinese are unstoppable on the Warring Islands. And he also shows you why this was one of the maps he picked. So different from most of the competitive maps that we've seen in the first two years of competitive Age Vampires 4. Exactly what he needs to take down the favored player in this matchup. Corvinus leverages Chinese over here, evens out this best of five between these two.